I like to think of all these arthropods just as kind of benign roommates, right? They, they really don't have a big negative effect on our house. As it turns out, um, there really hadn't been a lot of research done on the diversity of arthropods in houses. So most of the studies have been focused on pest species like roaches or termites, and uh, there really hadn't been just a general survey of the things that live in your house. So I decided to do one. Our project started in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we spent a summer surveying about 50 houses, uh, all within 30 miles of downtown Raleigh. So they were a mix of urban and rural houses. To sample these houses, it was really like a pretty intense indoor expedition. So I had a team of entomologists and we all geared up with headlamps and aspirators, which are these tools to suck up insects. We had nets and vests filled with vials and forceps. And basically these indoor expeditions took anywhere between two to four hours. So they were really intense. We crawled around every floor of a house, picking up insects and arthropods from the baseboards and the ceilings and the corners. One of the really exciting things is that we're finding a ton of diversity. So we find generally over 100 species per house. So of the many hundreds of rooms we've sampled, we have never found a room with no arthropods in it. There's some interesting things that were found in every house uh, that we didn't expect. 100% of the houses we sampled had carpet beetles. And we usually found their larvae, which are crazy looking. They've got spines all over their bodies and they like to eat carpets or wool or any kind of organic matter, although they'll also feed on almost anything else. And uh, we found these in houses where there were quarterly pesticide treatments, you know, houses where people were really trying to get rid of all the arthropods, but these carpet beetles can make it no matter what. So they were everywhere. We also found lice in every house. So not the kind of lice that you think of when you think of the head lice, but a very close relative called book lice, which are little teeny tiny, adorable little lice. <laughs> and we found them in 98% of houses. Do you know of drain flies? No, go look in your drains, you'll find drain flies. They're beautiful little flies that look like moths. They're kind of heart-shaped, and we found them in about 75% of houses. So don't feel alarmed if you have them in yours. I'm really hoping that this will be a global project and that we can uh, consider how arthropods have lived and evolved with humans all over the world in a lot of different types of living conditions. And to try that out, we sampled a thatched roof hut in the Amazon of Peru this summer, and that was a really amazing experience. And so it was a little thatched roof hut right on the riverbank. And unlike houses here, this house was very open. So I was curious as to whether there would be more types of arthropods in this house because they had easy access in, or if there would be fewer because they also had easy access out. But as it turned out, there's this core group that really likes to stay and live with humans, and, and, and that group seemed to be vaguely similar in, in Peru and in Raleigh. One of the big differences was that the spiders in the Amazon were big, right, where a typical spider in Raleigh was much smaller. That was pretty shocking, but great to see. I want to learn more about this ancient story of evolution between arthropods and humans and how that's changed over time, particularly with house building and indoor plumbing and all these other aspects of our modern lifestyle. We've been living and evolving with arthropods for all of human history. And uh, to some degree, you know, for better or for worse, it's something we can't control. So arthropods will find a way.